Hello class, welcome back. Today we are continuing an investigation into epistemology. And as we know, epistemology is a philosophical subcategory having to do with a way in which we're investigating how it is that we know things. So getting, uh, so when we're studying uh, epistemology, we're getting closer to looking at the foundations of how it is that we understand knowledge, knowledge acquisition, so on and so forth, and all the parts of that. So for example, investigation into uh, reasoning or rational cognition is epistemological. And then likewise, how it is that we understand things empirically is also epistemological. And so uh, we are also then uh, looking at how it is that we understand truth as well. And so an understanding of truth really is um, starting with, at least as far as Valak says, is um, looking at it in terms of looking at this question, what do you mean when you say you know something? And so when we're asking such a question, what do I mean when I say I know something? It's really, as I often tell students, um, uh, philosophically, we're reverse engineering how it is that we know something is not an everyday activity. So in that sense, um, it could be awkward to start looking at how it is that we're understanding truth in general by way of Valesquez's subchapter, knowledge as a justified true belief. And so we could start also by looking at this question, what do we mean, what do you mean when you say you know something, uh, by at least just laying out this idea that if P is a proposition, in other words, P as a proposition has to do, a proposition has to do with an account for how it is that we're understanding the truth. In other words, if I'm claiming something to be true, I'm making a proposition that X is true. And so what are you saying if you claim to know P as well? So first, you uh, must believe that P is the case. You must believe that the proposition is the case. So if you know something, you at least believe that it's the case. So we're then at least stemming the way in which we're understanding our knowledge in terms of belief, okay? And then likewise, in terms of a way in which we're understanding something to be true as a proposition. And so to assert that you know P or that you know a proposition then is to also assert that at least you believe that the uh, uh, proposition is the case. Hence, I know P implies I believe P for Valesquez and the way that we're understanding truth. So furthermore, if we say we know something, we usually have evidence or a justification for what we believe. Hence, I know P automatically entails I have a justification slash evidence for P. And we see that also in our ethical understanding when we're seeing something as normative, whereby a way that we're understanding a theory as normative is also a way in which we're offering a justification for how it is that we're working through um, right and wrong. So if you say, wrong for you to do X, Y, or Z, you're also providing a justification in terms of how it is that you theoretically understand such and such behavior to be wrong or right. So, um, so this also ties into the way in which we're understanding truth. And when we're um, referring to the way in which we have evidence for a proposition, we're also thinking of the idea that we have reasons to believe that the proposition is true or false. And yet, can we say that knowledge is simply a justified belief? Not necessarily, given that justification has to be true in the first place. So say, for example, that I claim to have a justified belief that global warming is a hoax, 
simply because I've been reading about it online or some of my friends have been talking about it as a hoax, which they haven't, but just hypothetically speaking, and um, or that people just simply agree with this skepticism of mine. So is this then justified true belief? True, mainly, merely because I justified the belief with dubious online claims or opinions and the like? The answer is no, it is not true. The justification also has to be true for the belief to be true, and likewise to be knowledge. And so, in other words, you cannot say P is true unless P is actually true. So, knowledge is a belief that is justified and also true at the same time. So you have to tie in justification and likewise, it also has to be true apart from that justification, and that's how it is that we're looking at something that looks like a justified true belief in terms of how it is that we're understanding what is true. And so yet, what if we were to suggest that knowledge is merely a justified true belief, right? So let's recall um, the philosopher Edmund Gettier, who was born in 1927, dies in 2021, he is uh, famous for what is now referred to as the Gettier example. And so suppose, so the Gettier example is what we call in philosophy a thought experiment. And so a thought experiment really is a way in which to isolate a hypothetical situation in order to illustrate a philosophical point. And in this case, we're illustrating a philosophical point in terms of justified true belief and also the way in which we're understanding things as true, or even more precisely, the way in which we're misunderstanding that which is true. So the thought experiment is something like this. So suppose John is a perfectionist, and he intends to go to 7-Eleven to buy low-fat milk. So his intention, to begin with, is to buy low-fat milk at 7-Eleven. Um, and 